Hi, everyone. My name is Abigail Weinberg, and I'm Open Space Institute's Senior Director of Research. Forests are one of our most effective climate change solutions. They not only store carbon, but the more they grow, the more the forest carbon increases. When we lose our forests, we not only lose the carbon in the trees and upper soil, we lose their ability to sequester additional carbon each year. In the U.S., our forests store 15% of the country's carbon dioxide emissions each year. And the science tells us with targeted land protection and management, we could double that to 30%. Yet we continue to lose forest to conversion and aggressive cutting. Today, we're going to share OSI's work to advance the use of forest carbon data to ensure the conservation field can locate and protect carbon-rich biodiverse forests. This helps land conservation organizations, public agencies, and funders deploy the best strategies for land protection and management. The timing is right. For one, there's never been more federal conservation dollars for climate change, and agencies, both at the state and federal level, are being asked to meet ambitious climate goals. This field needs guidance and resources to put these funds to use. To illustrate the need, USDA Forest Legacy Program has received $700 million from Congress to support forests as a climate solution. They are turning to OSI and recently awarded us a grant to ensure they and their partners have up-to-date national forest carbon data and tools. With this investment from Forest Legacy and additional funding from the Doris Duke Charitable, Lindhurst, Jane's Trust, Mellon Foundations, along with J.M. Kaplan Fund and individual donors, OSI is ensuring climate legislation is meeting on the ground action. So how is OSI making sure high carbon resilient forests are protected? We're working with funders, the conservation community and state and federal agencies to meet two goals. We're using data and science to accelerate protection of high carbon resilient forests to prevent the loss of current and future forest carbon. And we're using the moment of land protection to ensure permanent carbon smart management. When the land is sold into conservation, easements and management plans are created. This is a key moment to ensure ongoing carbon smart management. OSI is doing this through four strategies. One, capital grants for science-driven land protection. Our Appalachian Landscape Protection Fund is the first land protection program nationally to demonstrate how forest carbon and resilience data can be embedded into landscape priorities and project selection. Two, planning grants support our partners in integrating climate science into their conservation plans. We're sharing data and providing funding to broaden impact over many geographies. Three, support for public partners helps them meet their climate mandates. And lastly, technical assistance and mapping allows organizations to do this work that don't otherwise have the capacity to do it on their own. To ensure we store as much carbon in our forests by 2050, which is a critical deadline for reducing carbon in our atmosphere, we need to know what forests are storing the most carbon and where the carbon could be in 2050 if we protect and store our forests well. OSI has identified data and tools to achieve these goals. Neil Jordan, OSI's Senior GIS Manager, will help showcase the data and its utility. What we're looking at now is the Woodbury Mountain Wilderness Preserve Project. This almost 6,000 acre project was protected by Northeast Wilderness Trust with a grant from OSI's Appalachian Landscape Protection Fund. What you're seeing now shows different levels of forest carbon based on 2010 forest inventory data. The parts in the dark greens indicate high carbon forests and the blues have average forest carbon compared to the forests in the east. The important thing about this data is it not only tells us where the forest carbon was in 2010, it also provides an estimate of how much forest carbon will increase if the forest grows unimpeded to 2050. As Neil swipes, we see the areas in blue turn dark green, indicating these forests will store significantly more carbon by 2050. This data capability ensures we can protect the forests that will store the most carbon by 2050 
based on both current storage and future sequestration. The data also allows us to quantitatively compare projects. This project has an estimated 610,000 metric tons of forest carbon in 2010. To put that in perspective, this is the equivalent of the energy used to run 280,000 homes over one year. This project will sequester an additional 50,000 metric tons of carbon by 2050, thanks to good management by Northeast Wilderness Trust. If we zoom out to the East Coast scale, we see why this data is so useful for conservation planning at broad scales. Again, the greens are a high carbon forest and the pinky browns are the lower values with light blue indicating forests with average amounts of forest carbon. We've included the Appalachian Trail in purple as a reference point. As you can see from the Appalachian and Northeast forests, they store significant amounts of our Eastern forest carbon. If we lose the forests in the greens and the blues to development or poor management, we can't regain even a fraction of it by 2050. OSI is focused on protection of these high, high carbon resilient forests. Some forests in the east have been historically heavily harvested and these forests appear in shades of brown. When you look at the southeast coastal plain, you see they have relatively low forest carbon in 2010. Some of this forest carbon is stored in long-term forest products However, the landscape could store even more carbon while balancing demands for forest products. These forests are protected and well-managed. They have significant potential to store more carbon. Neil is adding data on forest carbon for 2050, which you can see as he swipes. As Neil moves between the 2010 data and the 2050 projection, you can watch as the browns and the light blues move to dark green high carbon forests. To ensure these forests are protected and managed to meet critical climate goals, the field needs to access these data and tools. While this mapping technology is the best tool to inform strategic land protection for carbon, you might have noticed that the starting place is 2010 forest carbon. While it's still the most effective data, we have identified four major updates needed to ensure we have the best resources available. To make these changes, OSI is working with data developer, Dr. Christopher Williams from Clark University and other critical partners. Our goals are to update the forest carbon data to 2020, revise the forest carbon projections for 2050 and add estimates for 2070, develop a tool that displays this data along with probability of forest loss and carbon release, as well as a cost benefit assessment of land protection. Lastly, we're looking to develop new guidance, how-to videos and one-on-one -on -one technical assistance for land conservation organizations to put this data into practice. To do this work nationally and ensure it's coordinated, OSI has organized partners advancing different aspects of carbon mitigation, including American forests, Nature Conservancy, Trust for Public Land, and the Land Trust Alliance. It takes significant resources to update data and ensure the field has the guidance and one-on-one -on -one support needed to do this work well. Thank you for your time. We hope you join us. And you can click the link below this video to learn more.